Alrighty, so this is how my YouTube Viking Challenge build turned out, and I'm going to be going over some of the things I like and don't like about the build. Before I do, I wanted to take a moment here to suggest to all of y'all to go check out all of the other builds from the makers who are associated with this YouTube Viking Challenge, because I've seen their knives in advance and some of them are simply amazing. So. I think y'all would really enjoy watching their builds. In addition, make sure y'all check out the sponsors of this challenge. They are providing prizes and whatnot, so it's really cool of them to do that. I'll put links to all of them in the description below. There will also be a voting survey, so after y'all watch everyone's videos, make sure to throw a vote in there on the knife that you like the most. Uh, it gives everyone bragging rights, and it's just a cool part of the challenge, and the more votes we get, the more fun it is. Now let's talk about the pros of this build. I just want to throw out there that overall, I'm very happy with how this build turned out. Uh, the fit and finish is good. It's a very complex build, so it took me a ton of time. Some of the things I really like here is I like the wood from Oleg. That stuff's always great. Uh, this was actually a birch that had been dyed and stabilized, so I really like the way that the, the wood turned out. Uh, this is the first time I've done Damascus fittings, and I was worried that, that the etching of the Damascus would really change the way my fit turned out, since this is a takedown, meaning there's no epoxy in this handle. I really thought it would have loosened everything up, but in reality, uh, it actually held together pretty nice and tight. One thing I did on this guard that may not have been clear in the build video was that I put a little bit of uh, masking agent on the inside of the components, some nail polish, that was a tip from Mr. Tony, so uh, definitely check out his build in this challenge. But that was a tip from him so that the internal parts of the guard don't get etched away and it doesn't loosen up your fit. So I, I did that and I think it worked pretty good. I do wish that they etched a little darker, so I know we're in the pros right now, but I'll throw some of the cons in there as we go as well. Uh, I wish these components were a little darker in their etch. I did try to heat treat them, but I used stainless steel foil because at the time uh, I had already shaped them pretty close to final. I didn't want a bunch of scale buildup that I had to clean up. So I tried uh, actually quenching them in a stainless steel foil uh, cocoon, I guess. And that didn't quite get them hard enough to show a really deep contrast on the edge. So they are a little lighter than the blade, but I think that's fine. Last thing I wanna throw out there in the pros category is the feel of the handle. I'm actually surprised that it feels as good as it does with this middle spacer in here. I mean, I know this is more of an art knife. I don't expect anyone to be uh, batoning with this or, or chopping down a tree or anything, but it does feel pretty good. And this center spacer uh, actually lands in a pretty good spot to give you some purchase on the handle. I've seen a lot of historic uh, saxes that seem to have, or at least recreations that seem to have a metal piece or a bone in the middle. And I, I wanted to try my hand at that and I'm happy with how it turned out as well as, you know, as the whole handle turned out pretty good with the takedown. Takedowns are always fun. Uh, they're very challenging, but it's really nice to have a, night, a bedded system and lineup pins and it all goes back together the same way. So I've always thought takedown knives are really cool and I enjoy making them. So on to some things that I don't like. The first thing I want to note is the pattern itself actually had a gap in it on the side of the blade that matters the most, the one side with your maker's mark at that seems to be the side when you're holding the knife, because most people are right-handed. They look at the knife and say, you know, this is the, the overall impression. And that part right there had no ball bearing. So that's super unfortunate. Uh, I think it kind of kills the flow a little bit. It's funny because on the other side, it kind of filled in. There's still a gap there, but, you know, that's just luck of the draw. I should have packed the canister a little tighter. Uh, another thing I don't like is the maker's mark was offset to the spine side. Uh, that was also my fault. I guess I was rushing and I didn't get it quite in line on the laser. I'd rather it be on the spine side than the blade side if it is going to be offset, but in reality, it should be in the middle. So that's something uh, I'm not particularly happy about. Onto the handle here, you know, I have two stainless pieces. I thought that would tie it together, but in reality, I probably should have just left everything Damascus and left these two stainless pieces out of the equation. Uh, they, they don't look terrible, but if I had to do it again, I would have done a Damascus pommel nut, and I probably would have removed this front spacer altogether. One last little note on this knife is that I actually etched it twice. Uh, the first time I started messing with it too soon and rubbed away a bunch of the oxides. But the second time around in the gator piss, after I neutralized the acid, I dried it and waxed it. And this actually seemed to have locked in those oxides so they're resilient and they're nice and dark. So I really like the way the second etch turned out here. I still have some trial and error to work with on the gator piss, but if I can get to a point where I'm pretty much at a coffee etch darkness, uh, without using the coffee, uh, to me, that's a big win. So 
I'm going to be messing around a lot more with that stuff in the future. So with that, I hope you all really enjoyed this build. If you did, hit the like button down below. Consider subscribing to the channel. Also, make sure you vote in this challenge and watch everyone else's build. Until next time, I'll catch you all on the flip side.